sky. Stories to give. The ones who make it there and can make it back. Salutations and shit, folks. Welcome to another episode of Travel and Shit, your new favorite travel podcast, where I, your host, the now tan D. Carrie, have an exper- experiential conversation about the nuanced ways life intersects with travel. So, uh, welcome. And I had the most incredible birthday. I have generally historically, if you will, had a difficult time really still feeling in the birthday spirit or even in uh, the birthday mood, if you will, once my birthday hits. Well, after my birthday passes. So August 8th, magic is gone. Unless I'm still like out and about from the 7th, that's a different story. But on the 8th, that's it. It's back to August, summer's over, school about to start, it's about to be traffic, and y'all, beautiful babies, about to, you know, cause a shit show for my commute to and from work. This year, happily, I am still, still reveling in the birthday magic. I had such an incredible time with my boyfriend. Um, Just, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Love you. And, um, damn, yeah, I ate so well. I really, really did eat so well. Um, we finished off last episode with me telling you guys that, oh, before I get into that, there's, um, new merch. I don't know if you guys have been noticing. I added some extra t-shirts very much so only because I wanted to match some sneakers that I bought, but I figure I'll leave them up there for a while. If you're interested, head over to uh, travelshippodcast.com and just click on shop and it'll bring you right to the merch store. Support your girl uh, for my birthday, buy yourself or a friend a t-shirt or a mug. I think that's all I have up there now. Oh, or a travel journal. Travel journals are a good way to uh, reflect on yourself, which I am a huge proponent of, especially while you're traveling. It never hurts to write your thoughts and your feelings down. It doesn't have to be a novel. It doesn't have to be, you know, a script. You can doodle, whatever. Travel journals are also in the shop. And I highly suggest that you take a little bit of time on your trip to take some time reflecting and writing it down absolutely helps you to be able to look back on those experiences and see how you've grown. But between t-shirts, mugs, travel journals, there's some merch, get into it, travelshippodcast.com, go to shop. Also, don't forget, there is a giveaway. Few episodes ago, 148 Swim for the Culture with Danielle Hodge. Hey boo. There is a special place in my heart for inflatable pools because I will never forget the first birthday that I remember celebrating as a kid was my eighth birthday and my parents threw this incredulously bomb ass, basically transformed the backyard into a water park. At least that's how eight-year-old me felt. So I always look back on sprinklers in the yard for kids to run through and uh, inflatable pools, slip and slides. I actually put I, my parents actually put my, you know, the little Fisher Price slide that the babies have. Well, we still had it because my brother and we would put that inside the little inflatable pool so that I'd have like a little water slide for my inflatable pool because we was always classy. Uh, but if you listen to episode 148, which if you haven't, definitely go back and check that one out. I had my beautiful guest, Danielle Hodge, explain how she is helping to bring culture to inflatables. And those those pools, the Rasta Unicorn drink floats, mad bomb. I purchased my own with my own coin. And I absolutely really do love them just from trying them out. I saw them, wanted it, wanted it, liked it, loved it, and was really waiting on the item to drop. I was waiting on that and after a while, I was just like, let me let me talk to her and have her as a guest. And she's a dream. That being said, I'm giving away a pool. So 
head over to episode 148 to see how you can win a pool. Go to the description. There's one step. That's it. Support the episode. You need to go to the episode, check the description. I'll give y'all the cheat code since y'all are actually listeners. Or just listen to the episode. It's really, really um, a great and fun conversation about um, black folk and water. So those are the announcements. And I am just going to now jump into this week's episode because if you can't see from the glisten, also uh, the episodes are on YouTube. So if you'd like to see my beautiful face while you hear this sultry voice, actually people like hearing my voice, which is news to me. I've heard it a few times from a few of you. Appreciate y'all. And fun fact, I hated the way my voice sounded recorded for a long, long time. Um, I was, I don't even know if I was in my, I, I feel like this is a recent development. And by recent, I mean, probably within the last 10 years is a safe bet. Um, but here we are, a whole almost three years of podcasting later. So I'm just going to dive into this week's episode, Nostalgic Travel Destinations. If you remember my origin story, if you will, I didn't leave the country officially until I was grown. I was 30. Actually, the year I was turning 31, 2017 was the first time that I left the country. I'd gone on like a bus trip, I want to say, with my church when I was probably in junior high, maybe late elementary school. And we went to Toronto for a caravana. Went to the Grand, uh, not the Grand Canyon, um, the Niagara Falls. Fucking loved it. But that was like a family trip. I didn't really... And I know I don't think that I needed like my passport or anything like that at the time. Borders, this was probably the nineties. Yeah, absolutely was the nineties. Uh so that being said, I don't really feel as if that counted as international travel or, you know, outside of traveling local ishly with family, because we drove. So my origin story is absolutely a place, if you will, of someone that didn't really travel until they were adult. So for me, nostalgic, nostalgic travel destinations are pretty short list. And by nostalgia, I, in this context for the purposes of this episode, it's more of a reflection on trips and places that I have experienced as a child. And then, you know, in a sense, how that has impacted my view of travel and also revisiting said places as an adult. I'm only going to talk about two because I only really have two nostalgic places because like I said, I didn't really do too much travel as a kid. I will say that we would go to, like I I flew as a kid. I'd flown to mostly Georgia and by high school, I'd also flown to Disney World. So I'd been to Disney World twice, but I don't necessarily view Disney World as anything nostalgic because I wasn't with my immediate family. The first time I went, I was seven. I was with my um, great uncle, my grandmother's brother, and his kids who weren't that much older than me. Kelly was 16, I want to say at the time. And Pooh was, if I was seven, he may have been eight or nine. Um, So family, but not family that I see all the time. I actually just got the privilege of going with them. Um, I guess because I was young enough and couldn't tell you. So Disney was cool. Then I went again in high school. But for me... Disney, right? I'm not exactly a Disney lover. You know, you have the grown folks that are OD diehard Disney fans. Not me. I don't give a fuck. Enjoy the movies every once in a while. You know, there's a little bit of nostalgia there, but it's more of a, um, damn, I love this as a kid or damn, this is actually a really good movie. Like I feel like this time, a couple of years ago, I watched Frozen like four times in one day. Thank you, Facebook for reminding me of that. But 
like I was saying, for the purposes of this episode, nostalgia is going to reference, if you will, travels as a child, destinations as a child that I've been able to revisit and kind of relive the same experience. So differently than visiting, say, Atlanta, different places out in that general area for family reunions, um, and then different places in, I think we did it, uh, we did Georgia, we did North Carolina, and we did DC for family reunions. So I've been to all those places numerous times with family. However, I never relived the same experience. I never went to the same hotel or the same family member's house enough times for it to be a consistent theme of something that I would want to recreate as an adult. What I did, however, do as a child that I want to, or did not recreate, but revisit was Brigantine. So Brigantine is a little, I guess you could say a coastal town. It's a island right outside of Atlantic City, maybe 10 minutes. I don't know why in my head I thought it was 30 minutes from Atlantic City, but you're a legit maybe two exits away. It's wild close. And we went religiously every summer as a kid. My grandparents have probably had that timeshare for about 40 years. My parents have recently taken it over. And the last time I went was 20 years ago, not even a rounding up, not even, uh, something was, you know, 13 years ago. And you say, Oh, almost 20 years ago. No, it was literally 20 years ago. I was 16. The last time I went to Brigantine. And the beauty in Brigantine is that the hotel is right on the beach. Like you step into the parking lot and it's also like the parking lot for the beach. So it's right there. Can't beat the location. 10 minutes from Atlantic City. and It's right on the beach. <sighs> Let me start with the last time I was at Brigantine. 20 years ago. 16 year old me. Uh, what do I have here? That pic, there's a pic of myself and my brother, just big smiles, you know, fake leaping through the picture. That's someplace in my parents' house. Can't call where, ma, dig it out. Feel the nostalgia with me, if you will. Uh, but let's see. I, ooh, first major breakup. Terrible time. Uh, <laughs> I experienced probably my first heartbreak or first like real, yeah, first breakup slash relationship drama, if you will, (laughs) while we were there. And I'll never forget listening on repeat to the I Care For You album, rest in peace, Aaliyah. And I want to say, can I talk to you? No, I care for you is title track of the album that song I had to have had on repeat billion times over like I cried so much to that song and there's a closet in the room because we always get the same room room 303 we always get the same room and there is a closet in the hallway at entry where in hindsight I should have taken a picture or a video so y'all could see what the fuck I'm talking about right but here we are without it Um, in hindsight, well, not in hindsight, I used to, I won't say shove myself in the closet because it's a pretty decent sized closet, but I would crawl into that little closet and like seclude myself from the rest of the family. That was my own personal retreat. And my brother wasn't allowed my grandparents and my parents knew not to bother me. It God bless y'all for just letting me fucking be in my teenage angst in the closet. Cause that was the only way to kind of give myself some privacy, a little bit of space to kind of just not be in the middle of everybody. Cause it's a scent is one room. Basically there's one room and we would go down with my grandparents, myself, my little brother and my mom, a couple, every once in a while, my dad would be able to get away from work and come down with us. But yeah, it was, 
an experience because I love going to the beach. They have a pool downstairs and my brother discovered that they had a fucking game room, which I don't know how I missed all those years before he was old enough to figure it out, but there was a game room. So I never really fucked with the game room. I think I went down to play pool with him maybe once or twice, but game room was touch and go. And as the child, I never had to have any interactions with any of the adults uh, on staff, if you will. That was all taken care of by, you know, the other adults in the group. We would go to the boardwalk every time we were out there. And the boardwalk was fun because they have all these stores along it. And there was uh, this place called Steel Pier, which is like an outdoor amusement. Well, it's course it's outdoor because it's an amusement park i don't know if there are many amusement parks inside i'm sure some places is a thing but this one on the boardwalk outside via the nature of it being on the boardwalk so we would do that every year and i loved my most exciting moments in reflection would be when my mom would actually get on the roller coaster with me my dad was always down my daddy's girl But when my mom would get on, that was always the most fun because my mom just really wasn't with those shits. Like that just wasn't her thing. So when she would get on with me, it just was an extra treat like to see my mom so excited and like giddy about something. That was fun for me. I used to hate having to ride the bumper cars longer than I wanted to because my brother was but a snap big. So that nigga couldn't do much. But the bumper cars he could do as long as somebody that was of size could ride with him. So, of course, the other kid ended up doing all of that unfun shit after it gets to the point where this isn't fun for me. So I didn't want to ride the bumper cars more than I wanted to. But you're the child. You do as your parents say, right? So I ended up having to ride that little shit even when I had been over it. But the other appeal to me was all the little shops. For me, shopping as a kid was like treasure hunting because the name of the game was find the perfect t-shirt or spy kit or book or toy, bracelet. Y'all, I'm easily entertained, but something about it was so fucking magical just going to all the different spots and trying to find what was perfect. And I also always remember as a kid just being stuck in, I don't know what hotel they would go to, like what casino they would go to, but you can't really, like children aren't allowed into casinos. So my, between like my grandparents and my parents, like they would do shifts of who all going to stay with the kids while the rest of us go gamble. Thankfully, between my grandparents and my mom, my dad, nobody's really a gambler. So it was never really long, but as a kid, 10 minutes feels like four days. So it always felt like, fuck, are we going to go get on the rides? Are we going to do something? This is boring. And I would just count. I remember one of the games my mom and I would have was count how many pairs of white shoes. Niggas love white shoes. And niggas is not ethnically exclusive. That applies for everybody. We would count white shoes and that was our entertainment. I remember whatever hotel it was, I feel like they had, what do you call the um, knights in armor, like knight armor or armor, like, you know, the head to toe whole shit. That was part of the decor. I remember that. But outside of the boardwalk shopping that I would do, Oh, I actually, they do, they did have a mall there. I didn't discover there was a mall until I was like grown, 15, 16 year old me. I remember one of the last times that we went, we learned there, I learned there was a mall and I remember we went in and it was just like, oh, I got my own little bit of money. Like I, I got a little something. So I was really looking for something to buy. But speaking of buy, there was also this shop on like the main street closest to the hotel Surf Sundry Shop, favorite store. I looked forward going. I looked forward to going there every fucking summer. And part of the thrill was hermit crabs. You could buy, uh, you know, little sand hermit crabs, land hermit crabs that you can search for on the beach. That God forbid I search for them on my own. But you could just buy the hermit crabs as little pets. 
and that, looking for sunglasses, swim stuff like floaties to take to the pool. Uh, y'all, a dream. Like it was just so fucking magic for me. And that was one of my favorite parts about revisiting the location was being able to really like the body remembers and that same excitement. It, I felt that as an adult, if that makes sense. Like I felt, I remembered what I felt as a kid going into the shop and just really being excited to see what all was going on, what was new, what was different if, and then also if anybody was going to buy me, whatever I found comic books and stuff they used to have, I really used to love that fucking store. And I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I'm a stickler for customer service. I'm sure I have. I'm a stickler for customer service. If I'm coming inside to spend some money someplace, treat me like I'm paying your bill. Um, not on some kiss my ass shit, but just greet me when I come in the store, especially if I notice you're greeting other customers and all of a sudden you don't fucking greet me. That's a problem for me. Um, I've walked out on some shit like that, but I appreciate that the young lady behind the register, um, did greet us when we walked in. Part of the thrill for me on this trip was being able to share this with just my boyfriend. I, you know, had never brought a boyfriend out there or anything like that. I was the oldest I was at the last time I went there was 16. So I'd never brought any friends. I'd never had any other cousins come. This was the first time I was ever able to share this place with someone that I cared about. So for me to be able to share such an important part of my childhood with my partner was really nice. That, that was important to me. I did really enjoy that. So being able to bring him with me and point out and walk down the aisles of the surf sundry shop and go see the little hermit crabs and shit. That was fun. That felt good. I really appreciated that. And before I get back to the magical fucking weekend that we had, I would be remiss if I did not speak on the shit that was quite a fucking disappointment. And that's kind of the drawback to nostalgic or reliving nostalgic memories, if you will, is that they're never going to add up to something that means so much to you. This was also the first time I'd been back since my grandfather passed. And I didn't expect per se, like I figured it could be a thing, but I didn't expect it to hit that hard to, you know, miss him that much. Well, not that I don't miss my grandpa, but in my head, there's a, I miss you, but it doesn't always, the wave of emotion doesn't hit the same. That's one of the things that I'm learning about grief. Cause I haven't, I never lost anyone close to me until my aunt Debbie died. And that was maybe 2017. I don't know. Maybe before then, maybe 15. I'm not good with numbers y'all, but I remember I was in this apartment and I, that was the first person that was close to me that I'd lost, but my grandfather is closer to me. My mom's dad was closer to me. And so my grandfather was the first person that I'd spent so much of my time with. Like I spent a lot of time with my aunt, but it was mostly hanging out with my cousins with her kids, but it just hit different when my grandpa died. That being said, I'm learning different things about grief as, you know, the years go by. There'll be times when I think finally back on my aunt or I remember an experience that we had or like her laugh. And then I have memories of like my grandpa when I was at Brigantine, the crocheting that we used to do. My grandma told us how to crochet. I could never do more than like that big ass link, like that long chain. I don't ask me to crochet anything solid. I don't even know if I could connect those link chains to each other, if you will. So I was trash, mad whack. 
But I have all those experiences and those memories of, you know, doing those things with my grandpa. And so going back as an adult after he's passed, it hit me differently than I kind of expected. So it hit me before I noticed that it hit me. I realized it been weighing on my spirit because by the time I got there, I was already hangry. So that didn't fucking help. But we left later in the day, so we hit a little more traffic than we should have. So I was already kind of, I was already a little bit off. And then when we got there, there was no fucking parking. There was uh, some kind of concert. The whites was out in full force, y'all. They were, this is a very, very fucking white town. I don't remember seeing, and, oh, yep, the only black folks we saw, they was all in fucking Wawa. They was all staff in Wawa. That's where we were. Uh, we also didn't go into many places because there ain't shit on the island. That's another disappointment. There's no fucking food. There's nothing there. I know that as a kid, we would always do our own grocery shopping when we got there. As soon as we pulled into Brigantine, when we got on the island, we went to the grocery store and they sure enough went to that liquor store. So we actually passed by the liquor store and it was cool to um walk by. We were only there for two days. So we didn't, we bought shit from the house that we already had. So there was no need to pick up bottles or nothing, but it was nice to walk past the store and see that it's still there. Uh, but we would, I knew as a kid, we always brought our own food or we went grocery shopping and stuff like that. But I thought it was just cause niggas were cheap. <laughs> I thought they just didn't want to buy anything, but it's cause there's nothing fucking there. All the restaurants close at like eight o'clock. I think nine or 10 was the, no, I think there was one or two. There was a Mexican spot. I didn't really like my food. The empanadas were good, but I had like a, what did I get? Uh, shrimp and crab quesadilla. Didn't like it. Could have been cause it got a little soggy, but Long and short, is really no food on the island. I really wanted some hot wings or there was no Domino's or it, y'all. Yeah. Food selection out there is trash. That's why we brought our own food because basically have to cook your own food. Um, so I was hungry. There was no parking because the whites were fully out in full white force. Um, God bless them. Nobody was nasty. Nobody said anything crazy. I, they, you know, were on good behavior, I guess you can say. But being surrounded by that many beachy kind of there's there's an undertone there's a feel there's an energy to the space I will say that about Brigantine that being a full grown-ass adult like I always noticed it as a kid I was always aware that there were no other like brown faces that we didn't really see anybody that looked like us while we were there but it just that just wasn't something that played in your head a lot because I was just stuck on when are we going to the pool Now it was just like, okay, I'm the adult that has to deal with interacting with the people around me. And you're not just like this cute kid that everybody's just going to smile at anyway. So at this point it was kind of like, all right, let's see how this goes. And so there was no fucking parking. We've got bags to bring into the hotel, but there's nowhere in front of the hotel to bring the car. Valet didn't do shit. Uh, at some point, I think he mentioned to my boyfriend, like, you know, if you want to leave the keys, we'll figure it out for you, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, so what? We're going to carry our bags from, well, granted, if they had taken the keys, we could have just carried the bags. And there's no ramp. They might have a ramp someplace in the back or on the side someplace that I didn't fucking notice. But are they even ADA compliant? Probably not. Unless they have ADA compliant rooms someplace inside because they were only, there's only a tub in our room. Anyway. That's a rabbit hole I'm going down, guys. Point of the matter was, I was already pissed by the time we got there. Between not realizing how grief was going to set its way in to the evening for me. And the traffic, the drive, no food, no parking. Then I get to the front desk and there was a woman next to me really excited about her birthday being the next day. And then if I hadn't been in a really shit mood, I'd have wished her a happy birthday and probably spoken to her about birthdays and celebrations because the kid fucking loves birthdays. But at that point, I just wanted to get my shit inside so that we could go find something to eat. And the front desk attendant that I got was dry as fuck. 
really didn't enjoy that. Uh, he wasn't rude, but he also wasn't nice. I also have a personal pet peeve for whispering ass men. Speak the fuck up, especially if you're providing a service. If it's one thing, if you're talking to somebody else and I notice that you just speak really low and you're whispering, I'll just be perturbed. But if I need you to do something for me, if we have to dialogue, we, if we're talking to each other, especially through fucking masks, speak the fuck up. I do not want to have to ask you multiple times to repeat yourself. That always gets under my fucking skin. That's who I ended up dealing with. So not only was he less than kind, I couldn't fucking hear him. The woman next to me is having a very joyful and loud conversation with the attendant that she's speaking with. So it's not like we're on the phone and you don't know that I'm having a difficult time hearing you. You're right fucking here in front of me. Speak up. They're having a loud conversation, right? They weren't being rude. They weren't being disrespectful. He should have spoken the fuck up. So that really rubbed me the wrong fucking way. And another thing, inconsequential, but I'm going to bring it up since I'm on this uh, shit on this guy train that I'm on. I'd asked him because while I was there as a kid, not only do you get little beach badges so that they can identify because it's supposed to be a private beach or some shit like that, whatever. Nobody really adheres to that. To my understanding, I've never seen anybody in any of the years that I've ever been there, nor this last time we were there last weekend, check for badges. That being said, they also gave pool towels and beach towels so that you don't fuck up their regular ass towels. So I asked the guy, do you guys still do pool towels? We never did pool towels. You don't know, or while you was here, niggas ain't never done pool towels, but I'm telling you 20 years ago you did, but don't, don't do that. Just say no, just say no. So I'd already started out this evening, uh, this little weekend on a pretty sour note, We get upstairs to the room and it's not exactly as I remember they've updated it and, you know, still needs a lot more fucking updating. Uh, but it just wasn't the same layout. Cool. Not a big deal. But there is a full kitchen, dishwasher, stove, microwave, sink, refrigerator, no dish soap. How is there no fucking dish soap? There's a single packet for the dishwasher. There's a single, maybe six inch frying pan, and then a maybe 12 inch by three inch pot. I would think one that you would put maybe spaghetti in or make a stew or some shit like in uh, mugs and all those things. But if I come into a space, I wash everything before I use it. I don't just pull some shit out the cabinet. I don't trust other people's cleanliness. And there's no fucking dish soap. Fine. We actually had an exciting addition to our trip where my boyfriend's best friend and his wife came down and shared the weekend with us. That I was looking forward to. It was my first couple's trip. We had such a great time with them being down there with us. So shout out to Wynn and Fanny. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you. And big shout out to Wim and Fanny for making me a brownie birthday cake. So they know that I'm not really a sweets kind of girl. I prefer savory, salty, if you will. Give me the flavorful. So what Wynn did was crush up pretzels. He's the baker, apparently. He crushed up some pretzels and put it in the brownies for me. But the special condition with which this brownie was to be enjoyed was they know that just does bacon fried brownies for me. So they made sure that we had bacon. Well, they, I guess, made plans in advance to make sure that there was bacon because we ended up going to the Wawa to grab some breakfast stuff so that we could eat the next morning. Uh, Made sure that we had bacon so that they could fry that Justin could fry the brownies in the bacon grease. So they provided the brownie cake and just fried it up for us. Wild good. So fucking good. Delicioso. Wynn, Fanny, appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. So 
we ended up picking up food from a Mexican spot. We get back. They got there right as we were pulling up from picking up the food and doing the little uh, breakfast run for cups and plates. And plates. since there was fucking nothing there, we bought some cups, we bought some plates, we bought um, breakfast foods or whatever, and pulled up around the same time. We ate our dinner and just drank. We talked. Good fucking time. I can't say how glad I was that they came down and really added to the experience for us. But back to disappointments, there is a, I think they were both queen size or maybe full size beds. I don't know. I'd say, let's just say queen. So there's one queen size, one queen side bed, size bed on one side of the room. And then it's pull out couch, pull out couch, no sheets. Cool. I know that it's, the sheets are going to be clean then check all the closets, the drawers, no fucking sheets. Okay. So maybe, you know, you didn't, y'all didn't know we were bringing another, you know, more people and we're going to need more than one bed. Cool. We have to go down and get the sheets. There's no one to bring them up. Third floor, not a big deal. Fine. We all understand COVID staffs are short. Not a big deal. When I call down for the sheets, homie tells me, yeah, I also asked for a blanket because the pullout bed is next to the AC. So like, can we also have a blanket? We don't have any blankets. It's fucking August fam. Where are the blankets? Why don't you have blankets? Why would they be in use anywhere? Why are there not just blankets in your fucking closets for all the rooms? You would think that there is just a two blankets, if you will, even one blanket assigned to every room the same way you've got sheets, towels, and beds in the room. I, I just, for me, that doesn't make sense. Me having to ask for basic things like that fucking frustrates me. That really annoys me. That someone is paying you money every fucking year, whether you show up or not. And to me, what consists of bare minimums, essentials, aren't really there. Another issue I had with these motherfuckers is the Wi-Fi. There was no fucking Wi-Fi. I called downstairs asking them about the Wi-Fi. And he's just like, yeah, the the password is, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Where do I put the password? Because there's no option to put the password in. You know, sometimes you go to a website and they give you, uh, like if you go to a Marriott and you go to a website and then it pops up. Marriott, you need to log in and put this in to use our Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. Wasn't an option. So I call downstairs and he's just like, yeah, you just put the password in. I'm like, okay, yeah, but what network is it? Because I would, I'm thinking I now need to search for the network because it's not doing the pop-up thing. Oh, well, on mine, I just put it in. It's right there. Okay, well, do you have an Android or do you have an iPhone? Oh, I have an uh, Android. Okay, so... I'm walking him through how I do it. And he's just like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. Huh? Useless. Essentially you're useless. But I tell him, I guess you're not tech support. Thanks. I, yeah, I just hung up. I don't even, I didn't even say thanks. I didn't, I guess you're not tech support. And so I just hung up. Cause by then that was like the third strike. I think I, I was just over speaking to people that worked there. So, Thankfully, that was, no, it didn't even end there. When we left, we didn't have to check out because we only did the weekend. My parents ended up doing the back end. And I asked for housekeeping, which I had to pay for since they took my card for, you know, the little deposit that they hold on the card. So I'm like, all right, well, you got my card. Yeah, $36. I don't give a fuck. Clean the room. They didn't clean the room. I know y'all going to charge my fucking card for it. So y'all better clean the fucking room for my parents. I'm going to have to follow up with that on my mom. But I had such a list of grievances and I'm glad I've gotten that off of my chest. Pretty sure that was the end of it. So now I can talk about the fun shit. We ended up going to the boardwalk on Saturday. We, I actually woke up wild early, made everybody coffee and, Got some bad news. Um, 
don't really want to get into that right now. But special rest in peace to Nick Carthan. Um, you were always a really, really good person. I'd never had a bad experience with you. I've known him since we were fucking kids. I know his family. My heart is aching for his sister. I said I didn't want to get into it, but Ari, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you listen to the podcast or not, but she is doing so well with just being her bright and joyful self. And I... Sorrow. Just sad. I'm really... uh, I, 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 it's one of those things you just don't see coming, you know, when your demographic people relatively your age, um, go early. It's something that you kind of expect older, right? Like we all know we're going to die kind of thing, but it, it just hits a little different when they're your peers. So that sucks. But I was supposed to be getting to the fun stuff, right? So Saturday started out rough. But after breakfast, which was copious amounts of bacon for me, I fucking love bacon. We ended up going to the beach. Such a good time. It was perfect weather for just kind of laying out. Not really in the sun because that bitch was hot. But in the shade, it felt good. The water was cold as shit. Vast difference from Miami. But it was nice to hit the beach. It was nice to be with our people. And we came home, back to the room, showered up, took a quick Uber to Atlantic City, walked along the boardwalk. It was really nice, again, to be able to share with uh, my boyfriend that magic that I experienced as a kid, walking by all the stores. We ain't going to none of them. I want shit off the boardwalk. But it was just nice to revisit that. And little did we know, there was a huge ass fish concert going on. I couldn't tell you a single fish song. I ended up seeing it on uh, Google. For some reason, Google showed me what was going on in Atlantic City. Don't know why. But I'll get to why it was a little weird in a minute. But we were walking along and we saw different entrances to like the beach area had no clue where that went and you ever notice how black folk always do security jobs it's kind of like they use the stereotype or the trope of us being big scary dangerous people to keep people in line um because it's fucking fish there were thirty thousand people there promise you couldn't have been more than maybe like a thousand black folks, if even that many. I would really be curious to see how many of us were in attendance on some, I'm a huge fan, I'm going to go. Or I'm even a mediocre fan, but I'm going to go. Long of the short, that was one of the things that popped into my mind probably the next morning, but, or even that evening, I don't fucking know, but I thought about it. Black folk are always the gatekeepers in terms of security. And when you go to different stores and you always going to see the black dude or the black woman in the front of the store, I don't give a fuck what store it is. Black people do the security. It's not like I'm against us having jobs, but it's just the optics. It doesn't sit right for me. But that being said, we saw that there was security, had no clue what was going on, didn't hear any music. At a certain point, we saw fireworks and was like, oh, cute. Happy birthday, me. Ha ha. Moving on. So we did the whole walk up and down the boardwalk. Finally, we got to Steel Pier, which is the amusement park. It was nice to see the Ferris wheel and all the shit lit up at night. But when we got to that area, it was... Now, mind you, walking up the boardwalk, it did not feel congested. It... Was, there were a lot of people, but we were outside. There weren't a lot of people to the extent where we felt cramped or that there were a lot of people. But when we finally got down to the steel pier, to the entrance into the amusement park, it just felt kind of busy. 
And I lost interest in going to the amusement park because initially right in the entrance way, you just see like a bunch of like games and stuff. You know, you toss the basketball and I'm just like, I don't really want to go touching nothing. I don't really want to sit on. Yeah, I'm good. Don't need to go in there. That was an easy decision. We ended up going to Hard Rock for uh, the casino. I think we spent like an hour in there. We spent 25 hard earned of Justin's dollars. God bless him. Love you. And by then I was over it. I'm not a gambler. I like guarantees. I'm not really much of a uh, fiscal risk taker, if you will. I like knowing what my money's doing for me. I like that return on that investment, but it was fun. We went right to the roulette table, which was digital. Never done a digital one before. We sat, ordered two free drinks, and we ended up doing, uh, we win a little bit, lose a little bit, win a little bit, lose a little bit, $3 minimum bets. It was a good fucking time. We have fun. And I forgot to mention, we did, uh, we had reservations at Cuba Libre, which was in like a mall full of just restaurants, which was really strange. I think it was about three stories, all restaurants. Never been in a a building like that before. Like a huge food court. But instead of stores, restaurants. Went to Cuba Libre. Food was good. Service was good. Drinks were good. And then we went on the walk up the boardwalk, hit the casino. We spent about an hour in the casino. And sure enough, thankfully, it coincided with when we were done for the night. We're, they're waiting on me to come from the bathroom. We get to that front door and we're thinking about, mm, y'all want to walk around some more or do y'all want to get back to the hotel? And a sea of fucking white folks walks into that fucking hotel. And I mean, they poured in. It was just like, where the fuck are they coming from? And we had no idea. So it finally is over. And we, you know, we're just at that point over it. My feet were killing me because although I had on flats, they were like, really rubbing against my pinky toes. Y'all, I was over it. I was eyeballing all the shop entrances to see if I could find a pair of flip-flops, something. God bless them. We were all over it. We went home. I think we might have drank some more than went the fuck to sleep. Kind of up there at that point where it doesn't take much for niggas to be tired. So night ended. Next day, we all slept in late. And, um, when and Fanny left relatively early, me and Jess actually hung around, just watched law and order. (laughs) We watched law and order. And I think we left at about eight o'clock, seven o'clock way later than we anticipated. But sometimes you really just got to listen to your spirit when you just need rest, fucking rest. When I tell you that this last week, was the last week I had of traveling was one of the most restful weeks that I've had on vacation. We did not exert ourselves. We did not do more than we were really comfortable. Uh, We didn't exert more than we were comfortable. I fucking loved it. It was a good, good time. And sat in a little bit of traffic on the way back, but... I didn't have to drive either. Um, but fucking spectacular trip. I really, really enjoyed myself. Although it started off very shakily because of the less than spectacular staff. I had a good time. I really did have a good time. And I guess, uh, I'll talk to my parents about whether or not, you know, they're going to hold on to it or not. Uh, even they got there and were just like, this is lacking. It's lacking. But that's the the drawback to already having expectations. That's the drawback to trying to not necessarily recreate it exactly, but, you know, wanting that old thing back. You had an experience. You've been there, done that. And you want to at least have a comparable experience. 
and I'm, I think in, I think actually that might be maybe why I don't really have any interest in necessarily revisiting destinations that I've been to already. I am, there's nowhere really on my, I want to go everywhere. I want to fucking go everywhere. And it's kind of one of those things where shit, this doesn't measure up and revisiting places that I've been before. I think in the back of my mind has always had that. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do it again. Like, look at what, but Oh, in contrast to that, look at what happened with Miami, Miami. I didn't really have a great time the first time I went. And I had a fucking fantastic time the second time I went. In this case, it was just the one in the two visits. But in fairness to the Brigantine experience, I'd been going there for 16 years, you know? Uh, So, well, let's just say 10 of those years I might vaguely remember off and on because before six well no I remember some of the shit before six my mom will for damn sure show me those um those home videos those are fun actually I'll put I'll add that to the Instagrams if you actually go to the Instagram and watch that video after hearing this message leave me a little blue heart for shits and gigs let's see if any of y'all do it just want to know if you've been directed there and this is also a poke in the rib for me to actually follow through and put something on the Instagrams that I mentioned in an episode. Every once in a while I say I'm gonna do some shit and then I kind of don't, but hold me to it. If you're looking for something, DM me and be like, "Uh -uh, girlfriend, you said you do something. I'd like to see it. But, um, yeah, I think that it's really hard to follow up something that played a really significant role in your life when so much of it isn't really something that you control. You're, it's kind of this type of experience in particular is a little bit contingent on the property and the people that run the property. It's not like we go to say a particular national park and we do a hike, you know, that's what you make it. So reliving that kind of experience or having that type of experience or in essence, the nature of a road trip, you know, a road trip to a particular destination all the time, it has that expectation that it's always going to be different, but it's going to, you know, set a certain standard when you do something a certain time. I think also the time that has elapsed since what I was comparing it to may have made the difference. So I haven't had that many, for one, nostalgic travel experiences from my childhood that I would like to relive or re-experience as an adult to really completely and fairly formulate an opinion on, you know, nostalgic vacations as a trend. But... I can also say because of my personality, not even really that interested. I want to see so many things and places that I don't really have to redo someplace that I've already been. There's the question of do Justin and I want to revisit the same cabin in Vermont that we'd gone to before. Um, There are different destinations I could say we'd redo. Like we absolutely going to do Hartford again. Um, but we would probably do, nah, I'm going back to the good one. I'll probably go back to the good one. And we want to go back to Miami cause I really want to do the Faina. So maybe there's room for future nostalgic trips. I guess I will leave a pin in that. And I'm one of those people that doesn't like to say things that I would never do, or there's a select few things I would never do, but hard drugs and working corrections. I would never do those two things. But outside of that, pretty open-minded. I'd try a lot of shit. So I don't want to say that I wouldn't. And then also starting a family. 
do I want to, you know, introduce a consistent destination for my family in the future? Is that something, you know what I mean? Like this trip in particular is kind of putting things like that on the radar for me. I don't know what type of personality my kids is going to have. So I can't really say what would be the wisest decision or the best suited decision. Cause I would like to have the financial freedom, if you will, to book a trip based on, you know, the different personalities of the members of my family going forward. Like, do I have a water baby? Do I have one that hates being outside and wants to be inside? Do I have one that I don't know, loves fucking cold weather. I don't like the shit, but, Apparently you do shit for your kids that you don't really want to. So I've heard, and as an adult, I see my friends and God bless my parents because I'm learning that you guys, no, I'm not learning. I've always only child did shit that I, that you didn't want to do for me, but it's different and it hit different when it hits different, when you can kind of look at things in an adult perspective, as opposed to just a logical perspective. Like it's always been something that I've been rationally aware of, but adult perspective of your parents, like being an adult and looking at how your parents parented you is just a different experience when you've got a different roster of adult experiences to pull from. That being said, with this experience, I don't necessarily know how or where I stand in terms of creating that for whatever family we have going forward. I don't know that I would want just travel as a baseline to be the standard and we just go to a bunch of different places. Or if I want to find a home base for the family in terms of travel and make that a thing. Can't call it. I, um, you know, what's today? I'm recording this on a Wednesday. I don't read fortunes. I don't read, you know, the future. I don't see the future on Wednesdays. Um, Maybe if I record on a Sunday, that might change. But, you know, travel is more than vacation. And I think I overall would want to impart that on whatever babies I bring into this world. And I think that with that in mind, it might be a little bit easier to, you know, figure something out once you get a feel for who all you're bringing with you. Who all's going to be over there? So that's pretty much it. I had here, I mean, as a footnote, I ain't going to get into that. I'll save, uh, my grandparents had a campsite at Chincoteague. It was a little trailer in Virginia and it felt like forever to fucking get there, but we would get there and literally just hang around inside with my grandparents. It was basically a, In my head, I remember it being a fancy trailer park. It was just like an RV parked on grounds. And we would go every summer. I remember reading Matilda. Love that shit. And that, that's no longer. My grandparents sold that years ago. So that's not something that I could revisit. But it is kind. Uh, nostalgic in the sense that I had that conversation with Vaughn Dabney about uh, van life, I would consider doing an RV trip as an adult. However, the RV that we went to as kids was stationary. We didn't drive that bitch anywhere. It always fascinated me that the kitchen table would fold down into a bed and that there was a little loft table and the tiny little bathroom that was on there. Those little things excited me as a kid. And I love looking at well-designed small spaces. Um, but yeah, you know, I, that I ain't doing (laughs) no time soon, unless it's like a glamping version of, you know, RVing. I could probably, I could probably talk just into doing that. We'll revisit that y'all, but overall that's it. I'm hot, I'm hungry, and I want to eat. So we're going to wrap this up right there. Don't forget to check out the video 
you know, the YouTubes on YouTube. You can get the link to that from travelandshitpodcast.com or just go to YouTube and search, and search Travel and Shit. Hit me up on Instagram, T-R-A-V-E-L, the letter N, S-H underscore T, or travelandshitpodcast.com, uh, Travel and Shit Podcast on Facebook. I am in my mind, I think I tell y'all this all the time, working on tweeting, but I'm not really a one-liner kind of girl. So trying to add value within the context of Twitter, I just don't have the space on my plate as of right now for that. (laughs) But stay tuned. If you so feel yourself inclined to always be on the Twitters, it's the same as my Instagram. T-R-A-V-E-L, letter N, S-H, underscore T. I'll be there at some point. So I'll see you guys next week. But always remember that travel is more than vacation. And there's so much more to experience in travel if you let yourself kind of do a little introspection and intentionally spend time working on yourself on your trips, guys. All right, y'all. Bye. Oh, and thanks for listening or watching. I appreciate y'all. Okay, bye for real.